Uh, we do have fog at Watsonville. So if we take off out of here and we go to this VOR called Woodside, we can go Woodside down Victor 87 and actually have some points to brief and actually fly an approach into the fog. Number six here, pop still waiting for that aircraft to come to the slowest practical airspeed, please. Roger that, slowest practical airspeed. Two, three, six, share pop. Scenario-based IFR training, and it makes for some awesome, unexpected learning moments. This guy's got to find an approach clearance for us in about two miles, because the final approach fix is two miles from now. Good that we departed VFR, because so often we're sitting there waiting for IFR releases. And students are asking me, like, oh, do we have to sit here? And it's like, you actually don't. That's one of the beauties of Part 91. If the weather is clear at your departure point and you've got a flight plan on file, just take off and contact approach and say, I've got a flight plan on file. I'd like to pick it up now. Right? And we sort of picked the route that we're doing now so that we could kind of think in front of the airplane. Most IFR flights are like this. you got a waypoint, go along an airway, maybe you come to a VOR or some other waypoint, and you turn. And maybe this last one is an, you know, an IAF. An initial approach fix. So from there, you're going to fly an approach, right? But you see, we're coming up on Woodside. So the kind of thinking I want to do is like, when we get to Woodside, what's going to happen according to the five T's? First thing we want to do is get confident with what's going on right now, and then we back it up with a checklist. And then we get our mind in front of the airplane and think, what are we going to do when we get here? And those are the five T's. And if we figure out all five T's for this point, by the time we're here, we literally have created this much space for ourselves. There's going to be a left turn to 141. There is no time. The GPS is going to auto twist, but it's always up to us to take that DK, the direct track number, and twist it into the OBS. So we'll have to twist that to 141 or whatever this number says. So left turn 141, twist 141. Uh, there's no throttle and there's no talk. So there's two things to do when we get there. And you and I just got 1.5 miles in front of the plane. And in that space, we're going to plug in the ATIS, the altimeter, so just kind of one at a time. We might get two of those done, and then we arrive here, so we turn the corner and we get our mind in front for this waypoint. Once we know what we're going to do when we get there, maybe we grab this next A. And as long as we've worked all five A's, by the time we get down to the final approach fix, the big picture is going to come together. This next point in front of us is one of my favorite demos for our system because there's really nothing to do. Like, what's the point we're going toward here? If you look on the low altitude and route chart, what's the next point? Uh, Sapid. Good. So if we go through the five T's for Sapid, there's no turn, there's no time, there's no twist, there's no throttle, and there's no talk. So you know with confidence that there's nothing for you to do until you get to Sapid. Right. That's a good feeling, IFR. So you're confident with what's going on right now. You know that for the next four or five miles, there's nothing to do. So now you can start working on those A's like getting the ATIS, briefing the approach, right. start looking at that big picture stuff is really the, that's the whole system. Now that I'm on my track, we're gonna turn to match. Good, good, so tell me what heading? 145. Awesome. I'm assuming there's no wind correction needed, we'll see, right? Yeah. Once we sit on it. Yeah. Good man, you're here today. I'm here, yeah. I you see it. <laughs> Welcome. <I> was, <laughs> yeah, yesterday was tough. I was tired and a lot was going on. Yeah. This was a summer weekend of training in Northern California with Jason from the Finer Points of Flying. The plan was to capitalize on the marine layer fog. We did three training flights back to back. I was managing a film crew for that first IFR flight, which meant I was fairly task saturated, but that made for a pretty good story. Oh my god, my heading is way off. This is where if your wheels aren't down, you can totally forget, go left here, right? Oh yeah, I'm forgetting everything. But for the first day, we'd done a VFR flight review over Silicon Valley. We're good, so let's go through this engine failure drill. That was a good one, and the link is also in the description. You gotta look around and find your best field. Anyway, this video is covering the third flight of that trip, which was an IFR lesson where we ditched the film crew and just brought Todd along as a safety pilot. So what I'm gonna do now, or what we're gonna do now, is contact NorCal and pick up our IFR clearance. I say to fix that. Excellent, and you maybe discovered there is a little wind off the ocean, right? Good. NorCal approach, Skyhawk 236, Sierra Papa. You have somebody in your blind spot here, just use code. Uh, 236, Sierra Papa, NorCal approach. Oh, uh, he's still six miles away. Oh yes sir, November 236 Sierra Papa is approximately one five miles to the north northwest of Santee intersection on Victor 87. 4,800 climbing 5,500. We have an IFR flight plan on file to Watsonville. We'd like to pick up the localizer 2 approach. 
We didn't know it at the time, but being number two for the airport turned out to be the biggest learning moment for the flight. So definitely stick around to the end to see how it plays out. And Jason and Todd also offer some pretty cool insights. That's where we're flying at. It's like we ordered it. Yes. Did you order fog right there? <laughs> yep. Let's look at the plane. Up there going to advise see if we can get in front of the airplane. And uh, money. That's this bend you're seeing here, here the GPS, again, is going to walk, walk, walk us through. If we had VORs, there would be a lot of turning, twisting, identifying. Do we have time to brief this plate? We're not really, right? Not exactly. No, we're a little behind here. So we'll go back to the map. We didn't get the weather yet, either. Well, no, we want to be on the plate, because this route you're about to fly is not on the map. There you go. But we got a good, so we got a good brief, though. We do. So, good morning, thanks for Mike. Let's get these A's done. Okay, let's slow down a little bit. So this is one of those things where it's like, if we are feeling squashed, let's slow down. Okay, so 2,000 RPM and 80 knots, yeah? Slow down? Yeah, that's pretty slow. So, um, not so slow? No, that's right? fine, that's fine. Go slow. Let me advise uh, NorCal. And we're going to 236 here, Papa. We slowed down about 1.5 uh, knots here, if that's all right with you. Just try to get ahead of the plane wall. This is 6 here, Papa. That's fine. It's for you to discretion. Roger that. 236 here, Papa. But look at all this time you bought. We're no closer to Nulls than we were five minutes ago, right? <laughs> it's like exponential. And I'm going to use the time we have to start working on the A's. So let's grab the weather. All right. Watsonville weather. 132.275 okay. for the ASOS. All right. Just trying to catch the winds again and we'll move forward. Calm, he said calm. Okay, great. So I got the altimeter. All I did is write it down, right? Because we're not going to switch. We're I, still I did switch. Okay, so I shouldn't have done that. Yeah, 296. I think he's on good. Because yeah. you're still being separated by approach control. Okay. Like until he says you're cleared for the approach. Papa, turn right heading 1900. Yep. Right, one nine or zero, two three six zero pop. So we're starting to get vectored now. Let's brief this approach, okay? We're looking at the localizer runway. Do you want to do the briefing? Okay, just get on my heading first. Okay. I'm going to fly one nine zero until otherwise told. Yeah, good. We got vectored for a while and interrupted constantly while briefing the plate, so I trimmed it because really the actual learning moment from this flight came later. Pretty well beyond right, power off yeah. gliding, this uh, is for sure, but don't. Let's so not talk about it. Clear if we just, uh, it's only Monterey Bay, shark infested waters. I mean, this is the real, this is that reality though, right? I mean, what, you know, if you're a VFR, you wouldn't do this to yourself, but we're at far getting vectors. Yeah, so I know it's a great conversation and I joke about it, but I don't, I don't fly the approach into Monterey because it has you at 1,500 feet, four and a half miles offshore, under the fog. Right. Right? Like, that's a pretty tough mission for a Coast Guard. You has got to get out there, get under the fog, go find you. Turn left, make a left turn heading 350, doing the localizer, maintain 2,000. 300 report established. Is that us? No. Left We've got approach briefing. Let's get how low, how long, and which way. So once you come down the plan view, we say how low are we really going? Straight in minimum 700. How long? Where are we going to go missed? If we have the procedure in the backup over here on the GPS like we like we do, then we'll go missed at the runway. Uh, there is a time as a backup just in case if you didn't have a GPS. Um, and which way? We said climbing right turn to 5,000. So how low is 700, how long to the runway missed approach point, and which way, climbing right turn 5,000. Like All right, avionics, we've got the approach activated, we've got... Thank you, Radar. Come standing by. So we're all set, airplane will do before the final approach fix, so now I think we're done with the A's, okay. except for airplane. And we continued to get vectored for a while, so we started to realize that our clearance might be an issue. Uh, roger that, 040, zero zero. so uh, confirm we're not uh, number one for the airport now. And negative. There's a there's a skyline ahead of you, about six miles ahead. And he's doing an approach into Watsonville. Roger that. And the fog's burning so fast that that vector hurt. Thank you. You cleared ILS. Christian localizer. Like it's almost gone over the airport. You think? Yes, sir. Yeah, it's getting there. The primary goal of this flight was to get a few approaches in actual IMC. We managed to get one, but I was still happy with what we also learned.
Are we still VFR on vectors, is that right? I don't understand where we're at in the flight system right now. Yeah, we're still VFR, and pretty soon he's going to say you're clear to the Watsonville Airport uh, via, or he's going to just clear you for an approach. Uh, we still haven't been, we're still not IFR though. The, the, the situation is that the weather is still good enough that it doesn't matter. If we need, if we said to him right now we're unable VFR on this heading, he would say, Roger, you're clear to the Watsonville Airport via heading 040, localizer 2 approach. Boom, That's an IFR clearance. Far, yeah. As long as you have a clearance limit, clear to the Watsonville Airport. Having said that, we needed our clearance pretty soon or a change of plans was in order. And NorCal confirmed 2360 Air Pop flight through the localizer. Number six here, Pop. Just join the localizer. I'll have approach plan for you uh, shortly. There's traffic on the final. I'm waiting for him to cancel. Roger that. Join the localizer. Uh, two, two, six, Pop. But he didn't clear me. So what do I yeah, do? Yeah, but we got to get down. I would say it's altitude our discretion. Okay, so we can ask. Yeah, NorCal two, two, six, Air Pop. Altitude our discretion. Number six here, Pop. Affirmative. Your VFR right now. So just cut the approach inbound. Maintain VFR. I have approach plan for you once that uh, aircraft cancels, once he lands. Roger that. Understood. 236 Air Pop. All right, zero, 035. Gauge is good. Lights. Let's turn on a landing light. Cool. Mixture's good. Fuel's good. Okay, Descent, okay, mixture, okay. fuel. Flight okay. instruments, engine. Okay, Checklist okay. complete. This guy's got to find an approach clearance for us in about two miles, because the final approach fix is two miles from now. Number six here, Pop, still waiting for that aircraft to come. So, so slowest practical airspeed, please. Roger that, slowest practical airspeed. Two, three, six here, Pop. I'm going to get that guy. Uh, Watsonville traffic, is there a sky lane on frequency uh, waiting to cancel IFR? Um, if you can do that sooner than later, it'd be great. <laughs> I'd almost forgotten Todd was back there until he laughed, but stick around to the end when he shares his insights about this situation. Just about to touch down now, we'll cancel here in a minute. Oh, that's not going to work. All right, roger that, sir. Yeah, we got about a uh, half mile here in the final approach fix. Uh, otherwise, we'll have to miss it. Yeah, and also keep in mind, you get uh, a couple people working the pattern, too, so be real careful when you pop out. Number six here, pop. I may have to break off the approach here if he doesn't count in the next minute or so. Roger that, sir. Yeah, we're talking to him on the intercom. He's going to get to it in a second. NorCal Skyline 219 or Mike Charlie is on the ground. I'd like to cancel his IFR. Nice. Good night, Mike Charlie. Around to cancellation of your IFR is received. Have a good day. Thanks for coming. We're low. We're low. Camera 6 here, pop cleared to the Uatu Airport via cleared localizer runway 2 at Watsonville. All right, cleared to Watsonville via the localizer 2, uh, 236 here, pop. Just keep flying the needle. Go down to your MDA. Just go right through the clouds. Like what whatever. Is my MDA? Uh, uh, 700. Just go down to 7 now. But why was I low? Because I wasn't going to fix it at a certain point. Uh, we were lower than 2,200 before we crossed the final pressure. Watsonville traffic, 2360 Papa is about 8 miles to the south-southwest. Uh, coming up over the shoreline, 1,300 descending Watsonville. I'll hold that heading, we'll catch back onto it. Yeah, definitely, and that's kind of the idea yeah, behind the Air Force, this is Sports Star 188 Victor. We're about uh, 10 miles east, and we'll be uh, coming in to do a 45 for runway 30 right traffic, Half Moon Bay. Good, watch your heading and watch your turn. So get that turn coordinator in your scan. The descent lasted a little longer, but I trimmed it because the real learning moment was during the go-around when we discussed the situation that had occurred regarding just barely getting our clearance in time. A few minutes later and the fog would have been gone. We were frustrated at the time that we only got to do one approach, but ultimately, I was glad to come away with the experience that I did. I'll definitely be back down here to work on my IFR chops with Jason in the marine layer fog. I gotta make a bit of an aggressive 700 turn to get back your MBA. on Good, 700 is your MBA. Power up aggressively, power up aggressively to hold it. Power up, power up, power up, push all the way in. There you go. There you go. Nice. Excellent. Nice turn. Look at that. You landed on the needle, too. Not bad. <laughs> so look out your window. Check it out. You're 700 feet of your MBA. We're just kind of not quite through it. Yeah, you just don't see anything yet, right? So look from wingtip to wingtip in a non-precision approach. Watsonville traffic, white Skyhawk 236 Air Pop is at the shoreline, 700. Uh, tracking the localizer runway 2 approach Watsonville. All right. I gotta get back on it, so. Yeah, good, and you're just still looking now, for a runway? What about my distance? How am I keeping track of when I get to my miss? Three miles GPS, to the runway. Got it. Now look ahead, you see that runway? No. Oh, push forward more. Oh, 800 oh, climbs, so. Climbing, yeah. yeah, and it's why you don't want to go back up in a circling approach or whatever. Got it. I see it now. Yeah, great. And so you would circle. Got uh, it. We've got people in the pattern, and since it's clear, we're probably gonna miss. 
Okay, we're going to go missed. Los Angeles traffic, 2360 or Papa, White Skyhawk, about two miles to the south of the field, climbing through 1,200 on a missed approach, leaving the area once so. And then you go back to NorCal okay, and just say you're on the missed approach and we'd like to cancel out of fire, basement. So stick around to the end where Jason and Todd share some insights about how that went. Huge thanks to Patreon supporters and sponsors for helping make these productions possible. We would not be able to do this every two weeks without them. And please visit flightchops.com to see a curated list of our back catalog, and you can also enter the contest via the mailing list. That's how we're running it now. It also lets us notify you when we publish, because YouTube is not doing a great job at that. And of course, keep your flight chops sharp. Todd, did you think it was rude that that guy flew the entire pattern and actually waited to put his wheels on the ground before he canceled IFR? No, no, really, like, when I'm flying an approach, I'm not really thinking about who's behind me, and he wouldn't have necessarily known, right? It's a point that's maybe underemphasized in the education, that, like, when you go into a non-towered field, the approach control facility hands control of the airspace over to you. Yeah, so you own the airport. You own the airport, and they are powerless to send anybody else through the system until you give it back. That, like, was, was eye-opening when I realized that, and the reason that that was true. Right. But that being said, I have a hard time questioning anybody who's like busy flying an airplane trying to land. Totally. So, I, you know, that's nice, but I can hardly fault anybody for forgetting to do that when they're busy landing. It's a finer point of flying. It definitely. is. Definitely. It's definitely a finer point, but he did know if he was paying attention because we were all, I mean, how many times did they tell us he was there? He was on the frequency. Yeah, the but he could be trying to brief the approach frantically or whatever. Yeah, yeah no, I, know. I think he just was thinking, like you said, I'm going to land first and call second.